Hello and welcome again, it's Rufamonger, and here we are, day one for Sub-Zero, the Chinese Ninja Warrior himself, and I'm pretty hype. So this is going to be your tips and tricks video for Sub-Zero. We're going to be going just over that, some tips, some tricks, uh, some gimmicks, some creative use of the Ice Clone and all that. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing I like to go over is Sub-Zero's air hammer attack here. So, uh, like I said, it's day one, but one of the key critical weaknesses I'm already starting to see Sub-Zero is uh, his overhead game is weak. Uh, he really only has overheads inside of strings like that, or just the universal forward three. And other than that, it's fairly free to duck him. So that's going to be a problem in the long run, but luckily, this kind of changes that. So, as you see here, if we get a little close, it hits mid. But if we do it right above their heads, it's an overhead. And unlike a jumping attack, where say if we do a jump attack and we do it on the way up, it'll be a mid, and we have to wait for the fall for it to be an overhead. If you do this on the way up the ice hammer, it's still an overhead no matter what. So this is using the tiger knee trick. Uh, I mentioned a couple other videos we've had here. So it is easier if you have input shortcuts turned on. Now normally it's kind of a bad thing, but as of the last patch, input shortcuts having been turned on is a lot more manageable to keep on as it'll screw you over a lot less due to the changes on the last patch. So what you want to do for this instant overhead air hammer, you see here, is you want to hit up forward, not up, as it has to be up forward because if you just hit up, it'll just be the mid. The hammer has to go over their head for it to be the overhead, so up forward. And then move your directional pad or arcade stick or what have you to up forward, to forward, to down forward, down, down back, back. So it's kind of a 270 degree motion. And if you do it correctly, you'll get the instant overhead that'll discourage your foe from blocking. Well, blocking low, that is, as I should say. Uh, once you establish the overhead, then you can go back to abusing the lows because they'll be scared which way to block. Now, next up, I would like to talk about the applications of this command throw. So, Sub-Zero is very lucky to have a command throw. It's a great tool to have. Uh, however, his does hit high. So, even though he has some tick throw setups like a Bane or a Scarecrow or a Swamp Thing, uh, everyone can just kind of duck it, so it's not going to work out the same way. But still, it's great to have, and it's one of your better combo enders. So, outside of the fact that you just have it, one of the really great things about it is the EX. As you see here, they kind of stay in place, meaning you get a follow-up. So let's say we do this, and we go in, jump to 2-2. Two, two. Now, I could have finished that, so why didn't I finish it? Because of the stagger property here of 2-2, two, two, they are stuck in this recovery animation here with the twirl, and they have to end it up. Meaning, they are forced to block whatever comes next. So, now this is where the tricks start coming in. So, say we do our command throw, and he exit, jump back, or jump, or walk back, jump forward 2-2, two, two. we do that, and we use that stagger. So next up, let's use a creative application here. So right there, they were forced to block the back 2-3, which you can then cancel into the clone, and the clone is now right in front of their face, utterly limiting their mobility options. They can only choose to either block it or take the hit. There's no other way out because the frame advantage of the stand 2-2 is so great. Now, you couldn't be a little more oppressive with it and actually, after the 2-2, go for like a jump 1-1-1 one, 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 or which you can also cancel the clone on block or what have you. But keep in mind, if you do do jump, they do recover right before the tackle hit and they have time to backdash. But if they don't know that, make sure to abuse it. So one more time just to go over it. So, EX your command throw, utilize the 2-2 stagger, and then force them to block back 2-3 and go right in the clone, and they have to accept the clone right in their face. Once the clone in their face, uh, the onus is on you to keep pressuring them, because it's very scary to hit a button because they can get frozen. So, just a quick example here. We got our clone up, and we can keep the pressure up by throwing the clone. Or constantly trying to attack inside of it, daring them to hit you back for the fear of they might hit the ice clone first and get frozen and then you get a full combo. And this is all the stronger in the corner because once you get in the corner you get some setups which we'll go into earlier but just to show you real quick. So something like that can happen which will go more detail and that's a really scary place to be. Now let's talk about some of this corner ice clone stuff. 
So the best way to get the Ice Clone set up in the corner is one of two ways. Either start or end or whatever combo uh, back 1-1 one, one, down 3, which is this. And you'll be able to get the Ice Clone out there. Or end a combo or start or whatever into 1-1-3, one, one, which is this little trip here. And you'll have to jump to get the clone after this. You'll want a neutral jump straight up, but it'll clone me in their face. So those are the two best options for this. So it's utterly terrifying for this to be in the corner. If you ever played MKX and fought a good Sub-Zero uh, Grandmaster who can do this kind of stuff, that kind of, it looks like it's going to translate pretty well into this game. Because once you're in the corner, you can't walk back. And once this happens, you ain't going to walk forward. So you're just in place and you got a groove on it. It's not like you're going to jump that. So you got to just wait it out and ride the storm and hope you don't get killed. So uh, for that specific setup right here, let's go over this one real quick. So the 113. So in and of itself, this kind of creates a bit of a 50-50 guessing game. Uh, this does not work on the smaller characters, at least seemingly. Uh, it has some trouble doing a Catwoman, I've tried anyways. But for anyone bigger than the Catwoman, it seems to work pretty good. So a bit of this 50-50 is based off the 1-1 string. So 1-1-1 ends in overhead. 1-1-3 one, one, ends in low. So we'll just demonstrate this real quick here. So if we go for that knockdown setup. And you see here, that 1-1-3 one, one, just knocked him into the clone. Free combo. So we could do something like this. Oh, I dropped it, but you get the idea, right? So that is the better of the two scenarios. So if they are now scared and blocked low, you can do one 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 into an ice clone or uh, ice ball rather into such a combo or what have you. Uh, so the high option, the overhead option, you do need to get to spend bar to get anything real off of it. But it is effectively a true 50-50 that they're just going to have to guess overhead or low once the clone's in their face because... Other than that, they got to do something incredibly risky. So it's fantastic to keep that pressure up with this. And it's going to be one of Sub-Zero's best game plans in this game, if it's anything at all like MKX, which it looks like. So Sub-Zero, you don't want to get cornered by him because it's going to be terrifying. So one thing to go over here is uh, the Ice Ball itself. So if you played Sub-Zero in basically any other game ever, you might be surprised to notice that the Freeze Ball doesn't freeze. You need to burn a bar to freeze. Uh, that's kind of keeping it in line with uh, the mechanics of it just too. No one really gets capture state moves without spending a bar in this game. But it does have a property just beyond the freeze itself. So we have uh, Dr. Fate here to set up to do some projectile shenanigans. See here, the usual stuff. Now if you notice here, I'm going to EX the ice ball. And it blew both those projectiles up. So the state of the meter burn ice ball is that it destroys all projectiles. So if you are willing to burn a bar, you will win every zoning war that this game could throw at you. Barring the trickier ones like from the deep or something that don't travel across the screen. But as long as you're willing to burn that bar, you're going to be untested. And plus, anywhere, or anywhere you can get the freeze from, you can always just dash forward. And bingo, bango, bombo, you get a combo. All right, and we're coming to the close of the video here. Uh, so it's day one right now, so there's going to be a lot of stuff we're left on the table here. We're going to figure out in the future because uh, just the nature of the trait, there's going to be so much to be explored. And like just baby stuff like if you trade up, hey, free combo. Like, stuff like that. Like, there's so many ways it's going to be trick people into getting in the clone or comboing into the clone, this, that, and the other. But uh, just to close out, one thing I want to mention is Sub-Zero has some of the best strings in the game. I normally want to mention here 4-2-2, which is this guy, and back 2 3 which is this guy. Uh, especially back 2 3 so we're in the round one fight position right now. Even if I take a step backwards, it's still going to connect. It's so fast, it's so far, and it gives you enough time. Uh, there's enough frame advantage in the hits to really just see if it hits or not. And uh, if you hit uh, back to back two three and then three again, that is safe on block. So you can just kind of easily visually assess. Hey, did I get the hit? You can go for an ex freeze and do a full combo or what have you. And oh, hey, am I blocked? 
You just hit X one more time and you're completely safe. It is negative, but it's still completely safe. Uh, Sub-Zero dominates the footsie game in a way very few characters can. And it greatly rewards you know, your concept of spacing. And it's just going to lead to some very rewarding gameplay, uh, especially with all the fun tricks and all that. Uh, you're going to make people scared to walk forward with the clone. And once they're scared to walk forward, you can kind of dictate the pace and establish your own footsies game on them. Uh, anyways, that's everything for now. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, there's going to be a lot more Sub-Zero stuff to come in the future and like all the tips and all that we're going to figure out. But it's uh, what we have for now. So thank you very much for watching again. Sorry about that. And go out and play some Injustice.